FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. It's all about. But you know what? We're busy occupying ourselves with the issue of gay marriage and men loving men and women loving women. And how about people who love the Constitution for crying out loud? What about those folks? Who do you love? Well, I'll tell you what, I love me some Herman Cain, that's for sure. Longtime supporter of Herman Cain back in the day. Wished he had continued, but uh, that was not going to be the case. But he is continuing on with his message nonetheless. Herman Cain, welcome to the program, my friend. Jamie, I'm delighted to be with you, and you're exactly right. Wake up, people. All of these distractions are intended to do just that, to distract you from the real big issues that this administration doesn't want to talk about. Herman Cain coming to the Rally for Common Sense. It's happening uh, Saturday the 19th, the Patriot Field of Dreams, right there yep. in Holt Summit Mo. And if you go to rallyforcommonsense.org, I'm told by Kim Paris, who you know, Herman Cain, uh, 40,000 people in the past three weeks have gone to that site. This ought to be a massive rally there. It will be a big rally because i got to tell you, the people in your state, they do turn out. You know why they care about liberty, they care about the Constitution, and they care about common sense, which is what this rally is all about. And as you look at this administration, it's about everything except common sense. And that's what the American people have got to wake up and send a very strong message about we're sick of this stuff. You know, the election that they had in Indiana, I'm sure you talked about it, uh, Richard uh, Murdoch, who won and upset an incumbent. This is the American people. My new book, 999, An Army of Davids, this is an example of how an army of Davids, the people, are going to change things because they're sick of these longtime politicians who are doing everything except representing the people. Yeah, you got to get a sense that somehow we have the news media and some of the folks in the Democratic circles and on the left are all talking over most Americans. I mean, and and and. Based on, first of all, the people who are flocking to the site, the people who continue to support you and and your 999 plan and reading your book and everything else, to me, I believe that the, that the news media and others are vastly underestimating what's important to most Americans out there. You see them every day. I see them every day, and you talk to them every day. Yeah. They think that the American people are stupid. Here's my observation. Half of them are stupid. It's the 50% that's not (laughs) stupid that's going to have to save America. Stupid people are ruining America, and some of them happen to be in elected office. But it's the people that get up and get involved and stay inspired, Jamie, that's going to take this country back. We can't save everybody. We're not going to get everybody to wake up to the facts. We're not going to be able to get everybody to wake up to the failure of this president and his administration. All we need to do is to get some of these people to wake up and make sure that the conservatives and the patriots get involved and they get out and vote and we can take this country back. And I guess in terms of being able to speak to those, because I, I have to finesse this every day on the radio, and I know you have to too. As you pointed out, you know, uh, there are some people who are just bozos, and, and they're going to vote for Obama no matter what. Then there right. are those who voted for Obama for whatever reason. I don't know. They must not have read his website or anything else, thinking that somehow he was going to improve uh, the country in one way, shape, or form. I think there are many of those people out there who are now feeling wrong, uh, misled, and yeah, I wish they would have done a little more homework because then they would have discovered what, what they were in for. But now we have to find some way to talk to them uh, and, and and the independents, obviously, about what the uh, conservative plan for prosperity and growth will do for them. You're absolutely right, Jamie, and you hit on it. Independents and disgruntled Democrats are looking for solutions, not more political rhetoric. And quite honestly, this has been a message that I have been, uh, you know, pressing upon uh, Governor Mitt Romney because he is the presumptive nominee. 
But I was on a flight. When I flew out to Los Angeles yesterday, I'm in L.A. right now. I flew out to Los Angeles yesterday. That was a gentleman who is a, an exe- a vice president of sales for a major network. He admitted to me that he voted for Obama, and now he regrets it. I think that there are a lot of disgruntled Democrats out there because they now see the shallowness and the hollowness of this president and just how bad a direction this country is going into. But we have got to respond with solutions, which is why I have continued to promote my 999 plan for economic growth and jobs. People can go to my website, HermanCain.com, and we have 999 the movie, which is five minutes long, and just released last week, 999 and Army of Davids, the book that they can also find at HermanCain.com. So get involved, but make sure that we are also informed about a solid solution. You know, early on, uh, before you got out of the race, I was so pulling for you. I love that. I love the 999 plan, uh, and and it does include a removal of all deductions. Is that correct? That's correct for the for the second nine, which is the flat nine percent on personal income. You still can deduct uh, contributions to charitable organizations because we wanted to make sure that people were still encouraged to continue to support their local charities because, as you know, local community organizations and churches, they do a better job than helping people than the federal government. And the first nine, when it comes to the flat corporate tax, they can deduct their purchases and they can deduct net exports, meaning that they don't have to put a tax on a product before they send it to another country, which levels the playing field. Other than that, all loopholes are gone, all special deductions are gone, and every business is treated the same, and every taxpayer is treated the same. What a novel idea. I think it's such a great idea, and it's something that is so necessary right now. Why do you think that politicians over the years, since 1913, when the income tax was first introduced, have avoided uh, approaching this or working on this or, or, or getting us to this point, the flat, the flat point? It's real simple. With the current tax code, they can manipulate us. They can manipulate businesses. They can reward their friends, and they can punish their enemies through the tax code. They can roll out one set of loopholes and roll in another set of loopholes. Uh, it allows a presidents like Obama to basically conduct class warfare by saying that he wants to tax the rich more, and that therefore he's going to help the poor. No, he's not. It was Abraham Lincoln who said that you don't help the poor by hurting the rich. And in this case, it's, it's, it's not even a drop in the bucket. You know this Buffett rule that you heard so much about? Yeah. But Buffett talks about the fact that, yeah, I, I pay less, than, less taxes than my secretary. That's not right. No, it's not right, Mr. Buffett. There are two, rais- two ways you can fix this. One, write a check and send it into the <laughs> government. Right. Don't drag the rest of us along. But do you know what he would pay in taxes on the 999 instead of little or nothing? $200 million a year. If you want to tax the rich, get rid of the tax code and pass 999. Buffett and all of the other people, it's not that a lot of the rich people are avoiding taxes. They are simply operating under the stupid rules that are in the current seven, nearly 70,000-page tax code. There you go. I mean, a lot of people are doing stories about how Apple and these folks, they call it evading taxes. They're not evading taxes. They're taking advantage of a, of a code and legal yes. legal ramifications thereof. And you know, it's interesting, Republicans have fallen into the same trap, too, of horse trading these deductions. And so yep. I'm so glad that you've been able to point that out. Herman Cain dot, dot, is it dot com, right? Yes. Okay, good. And uh, by the way, one quick question, though. Uh, do you miss it? Do you miss being in the in the, in the the fray there the, the, in, in presidential politics? I do miss it because I believe that I was having an impact on the narrative. Yeah. Because just like the stuff that's going on now, I have to keep focused on the narrative about the importance of replacing the tax code. That's where you start. Energy independence, not a lot of rhetoric around it, as well as, you know, we got to stop this outrageous spending. I was helping to shape the narrative. That's what I miss. I miss, you know, people having hope 
that somebody would get elected president who was really going to do what they said they was going to do as a businessman, which is what I was going to do. But I don't miss the media with its constant spin of lies that basically was hurting my family. And that was the reason I got out. I had to put family first. Well, we miss you, but we're glad we're going to see you at the rally for common sense dot org. Herman Cain dot com. It's been a privilege, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. It's been my pleasure. All right. Herman Cain.